All right, everyone, how are you doing today? This is class four, spring 2022 of Recording Studio Fundamentals. We are light a few students, so we will wait. We'll, we'll just work and they'll get here when they get here. So we're going to do one more MIDI assignment this semester, and then we're going to move into audio. All right, and this is going to be um, do completely due in three weeks. The first draft will be due in two weeks. And so f let me just read this through for you. So for the second, and this is available on our OneDrive class four. It's right there. I'll pop it into the chat so you guys can download it right to your computers. So for the second assignment, the class will create one more MIDI project in Pro Tools. You can choose between the following instruments, Expand 2, Mini, Grand, Boom, DB33, and Vacuum. These are the instruments that come with Pro Tools. You should all have these. And we are going to, um, start, starting today, we're going to go through and start to learn how to use these different instruments a little bit more. You can choose a cover song or create your own original composition. My only caveat is if you choose a cover song, pick one with some chords to it so you can get practice creating accompaniment patterns. All right, so yeah. You can do an instrumental version of a pop song, a jazz standard, or if you're a graduate student or a music major and you want to orchestrate a piece of classical music, I had a student once do a beautiful version of Debussy's The Snowflakes Are Dancing, and in Audio MIDI 1, uh, which is my next level class, students orchestrate plenty of Bartok, like two or three Bartok pieces as part of the classwork. So for specifics, graduate students, your track should be between two and a half and three minutes long and use at least 10 instrument tracks. Undergraduate non-music majors, your track should be two instruments long and use at least six instrument, two minutes long, excuse me, and use at least six instrument tracks and undergraduate music majors between two and two and a half minutes long and use at least eight instrument tracks. I'm expecting the quality of your work to be almost on par with the grad students, just shorter and with less instruments. Whoops, little mistake typo there. Okay, so these are some of the things that I'll be looking for. And again, we're going to be learning techniques over the next you know, couple of classes that will enhance what you're doing. So good timing between each instrument. We did the first piece to be exactly perfect rhythmically. In this piece, I want you to learn how to judge exactly what needs to be edited to fix the rhythm. So in other words, you may play something in and 70% of it sounds really good. Don't make that perfect. Maybe there's a couple of notes here and there you might want to edit and maybe 30% of it needs to be massaged, right? So that's what you would focus in on. But you don't want to make it so perfect that it sticks out from the rest of the track. And I'll show you techniques about how to do that using the events operation window uh, starting today. So you will also learn to balance velocities so that different tracks sound well played. In other words, you'll create phrasing and dynamics with uh, using velocity. Then you'll also create a panning soundstage using MIDI pan and further balanced instruments using MIDI volume. So for this instrument assignment, do not use audio volume and pan. So I'm, I'm very stickler about that, okay? So we're gonna be going over some new editing and mixing techniques uh, over the next couple of classes and going over how to use these other instruments. So the first draft is due on 2.9.22 and the final version is due on 2.16. Let me see how you guys do in two weeks. I may push this back a week. All right, let's just see. But for right now, let's shoot for the 16th. And then you'll upload your first draft here. You can just click on that. That takes you right to the page. And basically that's assignment four. Right, so in your ass assignments folder, assignment four, first draft due two nine. All right. So if, you're, if you can get to this folder, you can just click here and pop it into here. Oh, I meant March. I put, I, did I put, ugh, oh my goodness. Thank you. Thank you, Chelsea. Yes, I mean, this, this should be March. Let me, um, okay, March, all right? Thank you so much. Um, I, for the one that's up on the drop, up in OneDrive, I'll fix that and re-upload it. But for right now, I'll pop this in here and you'll just know that it's March 9th and March 16th. I will clean that up. Sorry, I apologize profusely for that. 
Uh, let's take a, let me just do this. So I've got a session set up right now. Okay. And um, let me just clean this up a little bit. Now, let me just show you something here. Pro Tools has two places for MIDI instruments or instrument tracks where you can affect the volume of the track and the panning of the track here and here. All right. This is the audio output. I don't want this to be changed at all when you're working with MIDI instruments. As a matter of fact, for this assignment, you don't even need to see that. You can just hide that like that. And you don't need to see the sends track either. So you could just have it sort of like that and you can gain a lot of space in your session. So when I talk about changing the volume, um, volume, you're gonna be dealing with MIDI volume, which is right here, and with pan right here. And then I'm gonna show you how to uh, affect that inside of the, the MIDI editor. Okay, so for this track, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six instances of expand, and then I've got mini grand, I've got tr tr another uh, a, another instance of expand which I have some drums set up I've got something called boom DB33 and vacuum so we've played a little bit with mini grant and expand let me show you uh, these other instruments really quick just we'll just do a spend the time just going through them so this first one this one here is called DB-33 and it is a Hammond organ clone it's called a clone wheel, right? So these are the controls right here. Whoops, excuse me. You know, your keyboard. Right, I can play it from the MIDI keyboard. So let's just talk about... We're going to talk about... We're going to start right in this area here. For those of you that don't know, these are called draw bars. An, a, a Hammond organ... Most organs are what we call additive synthesis. And the organ creates its tone by adding sine waves that are based upon the harmonic series. So I'm not going to go through the harmonic series today, but the bass pitch is this one here that's marked eight, right? That's eight foot like you would see in a pipe organ. So these are draw bars, and you can see that they've got numbers 1 through 8. That's volume. The further out they are, the louder the, the sound. And the further in they are, you can see that that's at volume 3, volume 2, volume 1, and this is off. So right now, we're going to just hear the fundamental, and I'm going to play this A here. And let me also do one other thing here, a couple of other things. So this is the fundamental pitch. Here we go. Right, and that's supposed to be a pure sine wave. It's not. So now that's at eight feet, and that's just that's just a number because you know all these are notated as eight feet, even though they're different pitches. You would think that different pipes would have length length eight would have different uh, d different pitches or different pitches would have different pipe lengths, but they just use eight feet to refer to it's playing the fundamental of whatever note you're pressing down on the keyboard. So if I play this A, you know, it's playing that A. As it goes up, you'll notice the white keys or the white drawbars and the black drawbars. The white drawbars are octaves above this note. So if I pull this one out, you're going to hear this pitch start to be added to the mix. Right? So in other words, this pitch here, if I turn this down and pull this out and I play this pitch here, it sounds up here. This one here will be this pitch here. and then you can blend. So that's three octaves now. You're hearing this pitch, this pitch, and this pitch all played when I play one note. And then this is 
way high. You can hear how high that is. Okay, so these black ones here are intervals between the octaves. So that's an octave and a fifth above, right? So if I pull the first black one out, you're going to hear something that sounds like this. See that? So I'm playing one note, and you're hearing a fifth, an octave and a fifth. And what's that? What interval is that? That is the third. That's this note here. So right now, I'm playing one note, and you're hearing a triad. You're hearing A, E, and C sharp. Right? So I'm playing this one note now, and what you're hearing essentially is that. And if I make them all, right, you can totally hear three pitches there. Uh, this one is this note, this right up here, another fifth. Okay, so those are the draw bars. Let's get them all back in. Now, the two to the left are subharmonics, right? So the 16 will be, you'll hear this pitch coming in. And then when you pull this out, Right? It's not below. See, it's to the left, but it confuses you because it's this pitch here. So now you're hearing, you're not hearing an A anywhere in this. I'm playing an A, but you're not hearing an A anywhere. So there are some common registrations. So typically when you hear this registration, this is the most standard registration you're going to hear. And also uh, the, the, the configuration of the draw bars is called a registration on an organ. Right? Another one is to have this out a little bit. Another one is to have something that looks like a horseshoe shape. And then another one is to have all the draw bars out. Okay, let me zoom out a little bit. Now, another facet of um, a Hammond organ is to, to have it, it, it gets played through something called a Leslie. The reason it's called a Leslie, it was invented by a guy named Don Leslie. And, you know, this sound, it, it's kind of sterile, right? So he invented something called that he named after himself called the Leslie. And the Leslie was um, a speaker that added motion to the sound. And it did that in several ways. The earliest Leslies had a, a bass speaker, a woofer set up, and a rotating drum. Right? And that rotating drum would disperse the sound in a circular manner right, and make it seem like it was swirling around. And we'll, you'll hear an example of that in a second. Then they added um, a, one or two horns and they split out the frequencies so that all the low frequencies were going into the woofer and the higher frequencies were going into the horn. And the horns actually spin around so if you see a wooden Leslie, you'll see the bottom part is, 
you know, a, a cabinet with like nothing's re- you can't really see anything moving. But then the let the the horns are usually exposed, and you could see them spinning around. On this instrument, this is found. Uh, let me move this so that you can see it a little better. Hold on. It's found right in this area here. And on a Hammond organ, if you look, they have a little half moon attachment right here with the speed control. So you could see that it's got three speeds. Break, which is what it's at now, which means there's no rotation at all. Slow. And you could see the light vibrating to simulate the speed and fast. Now, let me, uh, okay, you can see everything. So your keyboards all should have some sort of wheels or sliders or something over here called the mod wheel, right? So it's the one on the left, on the right. And there should be some controller there that says MOD. And you see how I'm moving it up and down here. The speed is changing. Let me turn off my microphone here. Hold on. So if you listen to organists, they're always playing around with the Leslie speed, and that's something that you can automate, and I'll show you how to do that. And then, so for example, if you if you have something like <clears throat> one of these, this horseshoe sound, which I really love, and you have this Leslie going really fast. <laughs> So that's that. Now, the other thing that is really cool is it's got this control right here. And let me zoom in on that for you. Chorus and vibrato. So they've got three vibrato settings and three chorus settings. The most standard one is C3. And let's turn that on and you can... Let me uh, put the Leslie at break. Right, you can hear how it's vibrating the sound. So that adds the sound. Now, the other thing that's really interesting about Hammond organ is that it's got something called key click. And that's something where um, the contacts, when they get older, they start clicking. And you can hear a little percussive click at the beginning. See how that's pure? Right, and that's Jimmy Smith all the way. Hold on. That's not the greatest key click representation. This could definitely be um, updated. And then it's got something called percussive, percussion. So let me turn this on, and it's got loud, soft, long, and short. It's got the third harmonic and the second harmonic. So let's listen to the second harmonic, loud and long. Here, let me turn these off, and let me turn the vibrato off. Right, so it adds that note as like a little percussive hit at the beginning, and then let's do the third. And the thing is that once you use the percussion, this, oh, that's weird. This is not supposed to work. 
when the percussion's on. Well, they did something different here. Okay, so, and then you can make it soft, and you can make it short, and you can have it off. They've got different tone wheels used. You hear how that's got a nice little edge to it? Okay, and then like all of these instruments, you've got the librarian menu right here, and it's got, you know, you can play around with all these different registrations. So you can play around with those. They've got uh, jazz, right? This is this is the Jimmy Smith kind of sound. And then the other thing about Hammond organs is that they have two manuals, most of them, two keyboards, and uh, most organists, uh, most, not all, play bass with their left hand in on this lower register in the bottom couple of octaves and then when they're comping their right hand will be up here and they typically use this re registration that's kind of like this uh, there's no percussion there right and then they'll just be uh, with the foot pedals they'll just be tapping on the foot pedals to give like a fake uh, harmonic and then sometimes when they're changing the registrations, their left the left foot takes over and plays the bass lines. Now there are great bass there are great organists that can um, really do great bass lines with their foot and their foot and their left hand together. That's amazing. But even if you look at somebody like Joey D. Francesco, he's playing bass lines with his left hand and he's doubling with he's just he's just tapping on. You could see he's not hardly playing anything but the fundamental of the keys in with his foot just sort of sort of tapping and not really adding um, a long tone there just to give it a, a bottom. And then when he's changing things with his left hand, then his foot takes over and starts playing the bass lines. So it's a fascinating study, the Hammond organ. So that's this instrument here. We'll go over vacuum next week. Let's talk about boom. Now, I think that this is still a, a useful, like I think all of the, I think these are all useful as far as being teaching tools, but I think that Avid would be really good. I have, I have a big problem with Avid. I love Pro Tools, the software. The company that owns it is, I'm not a big fan of. Some of these soft synths that are here, the instruments that we're using were first made in 2008 and some of them have not been updated since then. Expand 2 was updated in about 2010, but you're basically using stuff that was made 14 years ago. And, you know, it's so you know, the algorithms have come such a long way since then. But this is still very useful and I still use this at times. So Boom is a virtual representation of a beatbox, and like a Roland 606, 707, 808, 909. And as such, you'll see that it's got different sections right here. These are your patterns up in this area here. There's some controls here for swing, volume, dynamics. You can select different drum kits here. It's just got a handful of kits. And then you got different, some stuff over here which we're not going to worry about. We're not going to worry about the start and stop. We'll go over the pattern in a second. And then over here in this area here, you've got, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different drum sounds. And they're labeled kick, snare, rim, clap, closed hi hat, open hi hat, high tom, low tom, ride, and crash. And then what you can do is you can pick a drum kit from over here. So if I click urban, and let me just record and enable this. 
That's my kick drum. For urban, my snare, my rim, rim shot, clap. So these are synthesized sounds, right? That doesn't sound like a tom. That one does, ride and crash. But you can customize this. So that's a very deep, rich bass sound. But what if I wanted something a little snappier? I could urban two, right? Or I could do dance one. Dance too. So, so these are very 80s sounds, but this type of stuff is still. So you can just play around with those, and then you could do that. So you, with all these sounds, so like that's urban two snare, dance snare, dance two, electro. So you could create your own custom drum kits, and then you could further create, uh, customize them. Let's go back to the snare. Right, you could see that that has a really big decay. Boom, boom, boom. Well, what you can do is go right here. This is your decay length. So I'm playing it now on the keyboard. And I can get rid of that and just have that thump. Right, so I can really fine tune that. And then there is actual something that will change the pitch. So I can make it really low. Oh, you can. This is your volume. And then this is your pan. So now you should be hearing that in your right ear and in your left ear. And then let me just see. Right, so if you option, if you option click on any of these, they will go back to the default. So for example, if the decay was all the way here and I option clicked, you see how it jumped all the way over? And then if you're playing a pattern, like let's say I do this, uh, let me turn the volume down before we get blown out. And I wanted to just hear the kick drum. There's a solo. I wanted to hear this without the kick drum. I could mute it. Okay. So now the other thing is that the way that it's set up is that on this lower couple of octaves. So this is a, a 61 key controller. Some of you have 32 note mini controllers, some of you may have 48 note controllers. Well, learn your octave up and down buttons to access all these different sounds. So this is the kick drum, rim shot, snare, clap, second snare, and tom, high, closed hat, tom, another closed hat. That's sort of, uh, that's, uh, that, you know, it's funny, that sounds like a, uh, a tabla almost. And then open hat, crash, and ride. All right. But once you get up to around middle C, now, let me stop this and let me go back to split screen. So I'm going to play middle C and look at this area here. Right, you see how it's going through the grid, and I'm gonna go over that grid in a second. If I play C sharp, it changes. D. So there's 16 different patterns that you can create, use, create, and you can make each pattern a different part, one measure groove that you could chain together to create an arrangement. And I'll show you how to do that next week because I want to move forward with some editing. Uh, yeah, I don't want to, go, uh, I'm just going to do a couple of more things here. So let's go back to the first pattern. Now, let me play this and let me adjust the swing.
right? Listen to the placement of that snare drum there. So let me go back to no swing. Oops, sorry. So no swing. Right? Right, so the 16th notes are swung a little bit. That means that the, uh, um, it, they almost sound like a little bit like triplets. So let me clear this. So there's a little clear button up here, okay? And there's a couple of ways to make a pattern, and I'm going to go into this in more detail next week, but you can make a pattern where I'll teach you how to chain together stuff. But you could basically, if I wanted to do eighth notes, these are 16 notes. So this is one bar of 16 beat, uh, 16th notes. And if you notice, beat one is a lighter color than the other three, right? So these are your, your beats. So one, two, three, four. So if I wanted to do eighth notes, that would be two hi-hats for every quarter note. I click here. Okay, and if I play this, okay, so that'll just play. Now, what if I wanted to make tit, 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 where the second one is louder, right? Where the offbeats are louder. Well, you see how bright red that is and you notice that it's almost like uh there's a playback head that just goes rotates round and round if there are three levels of dynamics and if i click here you see that that gets less red and one more time and it's barely or barely visible right and if you you can really exaggerate that and put a kick on the downbeat. Right, so use the dynamics when you when you get into programming this. It really makes a big difference. Whoops, sorry. Uh. So the snare drum is too loud, right? So I'm going to go here and I'm going to uh, turn the volume of the snare drum down. And I don't like, it's got too much decay. See, so I'm customizing it. And the hi-hat is right in the middle. Well, I want the hi-hat to be over as I'm looking at a drummer. I want it to be on the right. So now it's over on the right a little bit. And this is too loud here. See how I made that last kick drum softer? Okay, so that's, you know, an introduction into the DB33 and Boom. I'm going to pick up with Boom and Vacuum next week. But right now, I want to spend an hour... And I want to create a track right here while I'm working with you and show you some more editing techniques using the event operation window. Okay, so this is how you would sort of do large scale uh, editing of a section, a tra an entire track, a section of track, several notes at once. Right, I had you do everything manually because I wanted you to get used to using the trim tool, the grabber tool, and the selector tool. And also, you know, there's times when you need that mouse technique to just do some very detailed work on a couple of notes. You don't need to use the event operations window. So let me show you the event operation window. And we're not going to use everything in the event operation window. We're only going to use a couple of functions. So... There is no one key command to bring up the event operations window. So manually, if you go up here to the event and you scroll here, oh, there is now event operations window. 
Okay, so it's, I never knew that before. So it's option three brings up the event operations window. And I guess it defaults to quantize. So, but that only works if you've got, uh, let me just see something here. Yeah, so that only works if you've got an extended keyboard. If you don't have an extended keyboard, just you could do op option T, which brings up the transpose, or option um, zero, which brings up quantize. Right, so any of those will get the event operation window over. So this is quantizing. We're gonna, I'll show you how to use that today. And this is change, how you can change velocity automatically, and you can change dur duration, and you can also transpose. So those are the four that we're going to work with. The rest of these are important, but not as important as these first four. And this is an introductory class, fundamentals. I don't want to spend the whole semester on MIDI. We do this in Audio MIDI 1 in much more detail. So you're just going to get a taste of this this semester. Uh, yeah, Chelsea, so you're talking about boom. It's a very cool instrument. Is that correct? Um, I was actually referring to the Hammond. I love that Hammond, and it's very fascinating. Got a chance to see a lot of that growing up in church. People yes. playing it with. Um, it's cool. So when I was um, an undergraduate at Queens College, I was friends with a guy named Loris Holland, and he um, was music director of a, a Baptist church in Jamaica. And he was unbelievable playing organ. He was a great pianist too, but he went on to have an incredible, he's won Grammy Awards. Um, he's worked with uh, Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey. He's about, he's a little, little bit older than me. We're similar age. Um, but, you know, I, I used to watch him sometimes because he had something called a Porta B, which was a, a portable Hammond B, and he did some concerts at the college. And he just watched these, him play. It was incredible. You know, it just really makes the thing you know, if you if you watch any of what she's saying, any church music where they're playing this stuff, the way that they interact with the preacher and during the sermons and everything, it can make or break how the the presentation by the you know the different moods by changing the drawbars, the way they play chords, the way they accent. It's just, it's just really do little fills. It's just really it's amazing to watch to me. I don't know. So okay, that's that's an okay software instrument there's better ones but in a mix i've used it actually i've used it on professional stuff so you can if you tweak it get it to sound good all right so that's the event operations window so now one thing i want to uh, do here is i'm going to start working on a track and i first thing i want to do is i want to figure out my tempo so i want something that's you know one Doom, chicka, doom, chicka, three, and four. And I want something about that tempo. So how do I figure out that tempo? Well, if you double click on, make sure you hit return and you're back at measure one, right? Just hit the return key, you're back at measure one. So there's this little plus sign right here. Add tempo change. So let me click on that. And that opens up the tempo change. And you notice its location is bar one beat one and with zero ticks. I'm going to do a little bit of talking about ticks uh, later in the next, in, over the next few weeks. I don't want to get too deep into that. Again, that's the purview of Audio MIDI 1. So if I want to figure out my boom, chicka, boom, chicka, boom, chicka, boom, I got my tempo. It's about there. If I tap on the letter T on the computer keyboard, one, two, and doom, chicka, doom, chicka, doom, chicka, doom, chicka, you see that it's getting my and do it for a while and see what number comes up the most so it was telling me that it was a 94 so i'm going to start with that so i'm at 94 beats per minute and i can either hit the enter key the return key or click ok i prefer that you get used to doing key commands and not using the mouse for things like this so whenever you've got a blue box like this hitting the return or the enter key will ena enable the change that you're trying to do so if i hit the return which since you all have mostly have laptops, you all have a return key. And I zoom out. You notice that my tempo is now 94. It says it right here. And it also says it right here. 94 beats with a quarter note. So I've got my count off set to one bar. So I want to do a piece that's sort of a rhythm section piece. And uh, what I find nice is to come up with some sort of like the click track is okay to play with, but I want something that has a little bit of a feel to it. So 
I've got a drum kit in Expand 2, just the studio drums, which funky dr session set. It's, uh, right, it's the funky session set. So if we go to, uh, let's see, where's drums? Drums. It's 13, funky, plus 13, funky session set. It's okay. I'm not going to, I'm probably not going to use this in my final bit, but I want to have something there that gives me a little bit of a feel to play with. You know, because playing along with a click track, like, you know, there's no feel there. There's just time. There's just a beat, you know. So I'm going to do something on the hi-hat, right? So I'm going to figure something out before I start recording. Okay. So that's what I'm going to play something like that. So it's one, two, ready, go. All right, so I got a little two-bar phrase there, right? Let me play that back. Now, you can notice here that I'm close, but I'm not right on the grid. But that's not, that doesn't bother me so much as that it's got a real, it doesn't have any feel to it. It sounds like a typewriter, right? Okay. Let's open up our quantize. So I'm highlighting this and I'm going to do option and um, zero. So you can hit the zero here or the zero here. And it brings us up our quantize. So I'm playing some 16th notes there. So what to quantize? You could do all sorts of work with quantize. You can change the note duration. You can but what we want to do is the note on, where the note lines up on the timeline. And you can even quantize audio, but that's not for this class. That's audio MIDI 1. So the quantize grid, so I've got, if I click here, right, you got to pick the lowest note value. So I've got some 16th notes in there. So I've got 16th notes picked. So let me apply that. And now you'll see that it looks perfect. So let me open up the MIDI editor. That'll help us out a little bit. Right. You can see that everything is right where it's supposed to be. But that again. It's, it's like typewriter. Let me undo that, which is Command Z. All right. Now, and also note that you can select, if you've got dotted notes and triplets, you can select them here. So if you wanted eighth note triplets, you would select eighth note, then you would hit triplets, and then it would say eighth note triplet there, and then you would have to get rid of the triplet. You would have to just click here, and it would go back to eighth notes, and that's for any note value. So I could do this, and let's, we've got some options right here, including swing, right? So let's to swing, and what I'm going to tell you is 50%, let's see what happens when I do it at 50%, right? Oops, it's at 44, I want 50. And things, so nothing is, there's no apply button here. You have to have a selection selected here. So let me uh, zoom in on this. And let's see what happens to these notes if I hit apply. So you'll see that some of these move to the grid and some of these are still a little off the grid, right? So let's take a listen to that. That's got a little bit better feel. Let me undo that. All right, let me make this 57%, all right? So I'm just typing 57 in there, hitting enter once. And then I can just hit apply. And let me let me get uh, way in on this. So I'm just going to hit the enter or the return key. And then let's listen to this. Okay, that's a little better. But what I want to do is I'm going to undo that and I'll open up my quantize window again. All right. So what I want to postulate to you is that if you're quantizing, you're 
your best friend here is strength, right? So if I take strength, I can change. If it's on 100%, it's going to do the entire exact command. If you bring this down, it's going to make it nine, like with, it's going to move stuff that's less than 91% accurate, played in accurate. It's only going to, it's, it's going to move those and the stuff that's like 9% off, it's going to leave those alone. Right? So let's, this one looks pretty good. This one looks a little late and this one looks a little late. So let's apply it and see what happens. So you see, this one didn't move at all. This one snapped to the grid and this, you know, so it just, it, but it didn't make everything perfect. Let's listen to that. Better. Now, it's the thing that makes it sound, there's two reasons why it sounds like um, a typewriter is because there's there are no what they call um, round robins where they have the same sample but they've made five or six recordings of it and then they make them go one after the other. It's basically playing the same sample over and over again. So the first, that one thing though is that they're all too loud. So let's bring the all the velocities down. Da, 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 right? So I can... Now I'm going to do some. I'm just going to play around with the velocities. better. So that sounds better to me, right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to highlight this and notice that it's two bars long exactly. I want to make this go for quite some time. So there's two key commands. You could do Command D, which just duplicates the selected area. You see that? And I'll undo that. Or you could do Option and the letter R, number of repeats. So if I put in um, 30 repeats, it should be 60 bars long. Yeah, it gave me 60 more bars, so it ends up bar 63 since we have bars 1 and 2. Okay, so now... I'm going to set my click track so that it only gives me the count off right here. And then I'm going to use that hi-hat as my metronome. So only during count off, hit OK. So I'll get one measure up front, and then I will play along with the hi-hat. So I'm going to lay down a piano track, hit return, and we'll start from the beginning. Now let me just see if I like this piano sound. Two, three, four. Not bad. I'm going to redo that. So I'm uh, I don't have, uh, okay, so I'm just going to delete that. I could just record over it, but I'm just going to delete that. But I want to practice. Let me try that. One, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, 
So I like that. Let me listen back and see if it... Now, I left the downbeat off because I'm going to be playing that on the bass, right? And I don't want to double the bass with the, my left hand. Okay, so I can see right here, this part here I don't like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do option zero, and I'm going to use a similar swing as the drums did, and just that little part there. And so I'm also seeing right here, and so you can edit right here without opening up the MIDI window. So I, can, I went to slip mode, and I can see right here, these are too early. So I'm just going to fix those. Right, so I'm not doing the whole thing. And there's a bad note in there, so let me fix that. All right, so this is a little bit these two so hold down the shift key and just get those now the other thing is that the velocity on this keyboard is really true I, I you know I, I play piano this has a, like an organ touch and and so um, it's a little bit uh, difficult for me to control the velocity on this so everything is played too hard. So I'm going to select everything and I'm going to do command zero. And that brings up my event operations. Now, let me bring this down here and zoom in. So what we can do is we can go to change velocity. Now I could, I could easily just drag everything down with the trimmer tool. Not a problem. That's pretty quick. <coughs> but with this, we could do all sorts of stuff, right? I could set everything to be 64. So watch what happens to all these velocity stalks. Boom, right? Everything's at 64. I could add any number I want up to 127 because you can't get higher than 127. So if I wanted to add 5, oops, 5, I can hit apply and you see everything went up by 5. If I wanted to subtract, Let's say I wanted to subtract 20. Whoops. I could do that. And then everything went down 20. You could scale by, right? Let's say I scaled it by 50%. Now, this is interesting, scaling by, right? It doesn't, it cuts everything in half. So you'll notice that, let me zoom in here. Look at the different the distance between the the this one and the top on the stalk and then when I hit enter, right? It's smaller. And the reason is that you're cutting everything in half. So, if something has a velocity of 100 and you're cutting that in half, right? That becomes 50. If something has a velocity of 60, that becomes 30. The difference between the velocity of 100 and the velocity of 60 is 40 digits. When you scale them by 50%, the, 50, the 100 becomes 50 and the 60 becomes 30 and there's only 20 values between instead of 40. So the value between the different velocities gets cut in half by 50%. So that's a that that also serves to compress the dynamics where you don't have as wide a dynamic range when you do that. So there's you know there's different um, uses for all of these and these are things that you have to experiment around with. So I just am going to subtract 20 from these. Now these other things here we're not going to go over right now. So I subtract everything by 20. 
So that feels better to me. So now, the next thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to right click here and I'm going to duplicate the drums. Okay, and then I'll just call this drums two. And then I'm going to delete everything that's on that track so there's nothing. And I'm going to put my kick drum down here. So my kick drum is my lowest keyboard. It's the lowest note on the keyboard. On this keyboard, you may have to shift using the octave shift down. So let me just... Okay, so let's, I'm going to do something like that. Let's hit return, one, two, three, and four, and... Okay, so I made a mistake there, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete just this much here, because that's bad, right? Okay, so... I'm going to start right here, right? And I'm going to just listen to that. So I have similar drum rhythm. One, two, three, and four, and... Uh, one more time. Two, three, four... Okay, now I'm going to take all this and I'm going to quantize this. But what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to play around with some other stuff. So there's some 16th notes in there. So I'm going to go right here. And down here they've got some different grooves from different kinds of, that emulate what an MPC drum machine, what Logic does, what Cubase does. And then you can create your own grooves. And I'm going to show, I might show you how to do this. This is really Audio MIDI 1. But maybe when we get an audio editing, I'll teach you how to do this. Let's just see how the semester goes. So I'm going to pick Logic Grooves. And I've got Logic Swing 16. So the 8 and the 16 means those are the rhythmic values. So I'm again, I'm playing 16th notes. So I'm going to select this. And then I'm going to make my timing 90%. I don't want to make it 100%. I just don't want to do that, right? So I'll hit that. And it moved stuff a little bit. Let's take a listen. So I like that. I turned off the hi-hat because I kind of like this feel now that I've got. Whoops. And then I can just duplicate this. Now, the next thing I want to do is... So I'm starting to get something here, and I'm thinking now that I'd, I'm going to change my bass, my, my hi-hat. So I'm going to just delete that, and I'm going to play a different hi-hat track in, and I'm going to use the same drums that I did before to play the hi-hat. Let me just play. I can't, um, I'm just going to show you something. So that's not sounding good, so I'm going to play around with that. I'm going to go here, and instead of 16ths, I'm going to try the Logic 8th, eighth. and again, not completely... So there's something weird that i am got to figure out why my MIDI merge is no longer working up here. Um, so I'm going to have to work a little differently. So I'm going to do one more drum kit here. And let's see. 
I'm going to get rid of this and this will be drums three. I, I would typically be doing this all on one track, but uh, there's something not working right with my Pro Tools right now. Oh, I think I know what it is. Okay, never mind. I figured out the problem, so let me delete that. Okay, so I've got two tracks of drums. I'm going to leave my kick drum free in, in, in this one track. So right up here, actually, uh, I'm going to leave my hi-hat free because that's keeping my time. and uh, But right here, there's a function called MIDI Merge, right here. Turn that on, and what that lets me do is that lets me record MIDI information onto a track without erasing the original track. All right, so I hit return, and now I can record cross stick on two and four on this track without erasing the kick drum. Two three and four and oh, didn't like that so I just undo that and it disappeared it so that was command Z two and three and four and four. okay great so now watch this this is really cool so if I open up my MIDI editor, right? Oops, let's get this so that I can get really show you it what I want to do. All right, so if I this is the uh, this is the cross stick. It's right here. You'll notice when I click on that, there's a C sharp that gets highlighted. So if I click on that C sharp, you'll see that all the cross sticks get selected. So I can do a separate quantizing on that cross stick. So if I do option zero, I'll bring up my quantizing. What if I did this? If I went back to 16th note with, and I made my swing, let's make up my swing a little bit more, 61%, and then let's apply that. And let's take a listen. Okay, so I like the way that sounds. So you can definitely, you know, quantize individual instruments on the drums to different different kinds of um, feels. And you're, now you're creating a, a, like a really more complex feel. And that's something I, I, I do all the time. Great drummers do that. Their kick drum has a different feel than their cross stick, but that all works together. Uh, yeah. Okay, so now I can play a bass line in. What if you're keyboard challenged, right? You can't, you're not a good keyboard player, but you want a bass line. Well, the bass line typically um, locks in with the kick drum. And in popular music styles, the kick drum is kind of like what the clave is in Afro-Cuban styles. It's that foundation with which the whole rhythm is built around of the piece. So let, let me show you something here. Give me one sec. Okay. So I, I am going to do something that takes uh, this you advances that idea I just showed you of selecting just this cross stick. All right, so the kick drum is all these notes. So if I highlight this, right, and then I do command and the letter C, right, I've copied just those kick drums. And then let's say I go up to this this free track and I hit click in the timeline, hit return, and then I do, um, well, first of all, I should name the track, so I'm going to name this bass. And if I merge paste, which is option M, I've got the same rhythm as the kick drum, right in there. So let me just select the bass sound really quickly. So I'm just going to do... Uh, soft finger bass for right now. So if I solo this, right, so you'll hear that that fits in really nicely with the kick drum. Okay, so that's not really the chords that I'm playing, and it's not really an interesting bass line, but you've, you're, you've, now you can create a bass line. You know, I could play. 
in there. But what if you can't play keyboards well enough to come up with a bass line? Well, this is one way that you can come up with a bass line that locks in with the bass drum. And then you can add a couple of notes here and there as fills. And I'll show you. Let's work on that together. All right. So I'm my chord progression is G minor to E flat, right? So the first measure. So let's highlight all these, right? And they're all the pitch C. So I'm going to, I want to make them all up to G. So I'm going to use the upward facing, the upward arrow, C sharp, D, E flat, E, F, F sharp, G. And then this is an E flat chord. So let me highlight these and let me just go up D, uh, D flat, D, E flat. And then this right here, let's make this um, a little pickup into that. We'll make that a D. Okay, that's great. Now let's work on making it sound like a bass player because no bass player would go bip, bip, bip for a piece like this, I don't think. So I'm going to go to slip mode and I'm going to bring make this first one longer. Play around with it. Right, so make this one longer, it's a little shorter. I need to hear a little bit of this. Boom, boom, beep, boom. Right, I could then, then I could play around with it a little bit more. What if I wanted to do something like this? Root, and then up to the fifth, which would be a D, and then watch this. So if I notice how this note is highlighted, and if I hit the right arrow, it's going to select this note here. So notice how I'm working the keyboard, not the mouse. It's quicker, right? I can go through all those notes much quicker. And let's say I made this. Um, well, uh, let me. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me undo that. I want that an octave higher, so it'll be shift and the up arrow. So let's take a listen to that. Do, do, do. Okay. So now I'm starting to get somewhere. This could be a little bit longer. Right, and then this, right, this could be just a touch longer. So you see, I'm starting to make a bass line that works, right? And then um, I could do the same thing with this next bit. So if I, if let's say I select this one here. That, that's fine. Let's do this. This could go up to a B flat. And then maybe this next one, instead of going up to the A, it will go to an F. And then I can um, select all this, right? So I've got two measures selected. And then just do Command D, and that will duplicate that. So now I should have four measures of bass line. Okay, so I did something incorrect there. Here we go. Right, okay, so this can't be an F, so let me make this back down to an E flat, and then let's work on our note lengths. So let me go back to slip mode here and make this longer. Do B, bop. Right, so let's just uh, listen to that again. And then this right here, let me make this just right. It sounds a little square, so I'm going to make a little closer to this rhythmically. Ooh, B, ooh, it's too long. So again, I'm just tweaking this, right? Okay, and now that's two bars. Let's make, duplicate that. I'm going to get rid of this one. And then I'm going to duplicate that, right? Which is Command D. Now, I would like to have two notes here that lead up to this note. 
So I'm going to make an eighth note and I'm going to use my pencil tool and I'm going to draw in F and F sharp. And then I'm going to swing those a little bit, right? So if I do uh, this, those are eighth notes. So we'll just swing those and you'll see it move the second one back. And then I'm probably going to have to move my velocity up a little bit and let's listen to that. Okay, so, but, 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 right? How does the bass player play that? Those are too long, those notes. So let me make those shorter. So this one is too swung. So let me bring this in, in a little bit, right? So notice I'm not editing to the grid anymore. I'm listening. And then do something different the second time through. So shift up. So that goes up the octave. So now, right, we've got a four bar phrase. Okay. Right? So again, I could play this bass line in, but I'm trying to teach you guys different techniques for doing different things, right? So you will... Um, be able to use all the tools that are available to you to cr paint your oral picture. So let's uh, let's move on from there. Now let's talk about track organization, right? Let's get right into that now. So the what I would do with the rhythm section piece, which is I would have the drums, what most uh, engineers do is they have the drums on the top, then the bass, and then the piano. So that's a little better. And let's get some color coding. So my drums are the same color, the bass is different, and the piano is different. So what I want to have now is I want to have something that's got sort of like a sustained sound to it. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to look at soft pads. And then there's something called big soft pad. I'm just going to play that and see what that sounds like. Nope, I don't like that. So what I'm going to do, something I know will work, is I'm going to go to electric pianos and I'm just going to pick a basic suitcase, which is a Rhodes piano. All right, so let me just show you a little synthesis here. So right here, you have attack, decay, release. That's four of, that's three of the four parameters of a envelope, and that is a volume dependent uh, and time. So if I want to have something, I like that sound, but I want it to be a little smoother, I could just edit the attack like this. Right? All right, so let me play that now. And I go into that in Audio MIDI 1, how to do that. So this will be a E piano pad before I start playing. One, two, three, four. Right away, wrong octave, right? Two, three, four. Okay, great. This, I'm not touching the timing. There's nothing wrong with that. But what I want to look at is the velocities, right? So I showed, uh, so I'm going to do something really interesting here is I want these to be really smooth. So I'm just going to, well, what I could do is, uh, right, option zero, get this and go to change velocity. And I'm going to set them all to 40, and now they're all set to 40. Soft. Okay. So you see it's starting to take shape now. And 
you know, for those of you that are used to writing in finale or, or Sibelius or notation, you're, you know, and also, the, you know, those of you that are undergraduates that have taken counterpoint and composition classes, you're used to like writing everything out and calculating where all the notes are, what all the relationships are between all the notes and how to make counterpoint and all that stuff. And that's very valid and that's really a, a very um, necessary study. Those of you that are not music majors, you've, you've not looked at that prop most likely and that doesn't mean you can't create music. You have to learn to develop your ears so that you'll be able to hear stuff. So you'll see here, I haven't written anything out, but everything fits in perfectly. It's experience. I've been doing this for decades, right? So I can, I know what, how these, all these instruments work together. And that's something with practice you will be able to get to, right? But you have to start doing it. And what I want to show you here is tools and working methods so that I change the way you work. You know, it's funny. Uh, about five years ago, I had a very incredibly talented pianist in my, it took two, two semesters with me. Yeah, he took Audio MIDI 1 and Audio MIDI 2. And like for the whole two semesters, he couldn't get in. He had to have everything written out on manuscript. He wrote out all his parts and then he played them into Pro Tools and he just couldn't get beyond the fact. And this was like a jazz pianist who could improvise really well. And he's a professional musician before. I mean, he wasn't he wasn't in his mid-20s going to graduate school. He was 35 years old. He'd been out working as a professional. He'd done touring gigs and everything and improvising all over the place. And he couldn't just improvise his parts in. And, and, just, I, his, I, and he did a great job. He got great grades and he's a great musician. But I always found that really fascinating that some people no matter what, they have to sort of grab onto that um, paradigm of having everything written out. And I want you guys to start using your ears. I do look at notation occasionally when I work. Yes, I definitely look at notation, but I write stuff without looking at notation, big orchestral things. I just, you know, I don't, I don't need to do it at this point. It slows me down. So, um, you know, just do the best you can with this stuff. Get started. Uh, Okay, so I think at this point, are there any questions on this? Okay, so we went over, uh, you know, we spent like about half an hour looking at mixes. Then I showed you the basics of using Boom. We're going to go over Boom a little bit more next week. I showed you the basics of DB33. Um, and then we spent time and I showed you how to do things with the event window operations window, how to call it up. You can either do it manually by going to the event pull down menu or just using, you know, any of those key commands that'll bring up one of them and then changing it. We're only going to be using four, changing the function, right? We're only going to be using the first four. So that would be uh, quantizing, velocity, uh, duration, and what's the other one? Let me see. Oh, transpose, right. But transpose you can do inside the MIDI editor so far right and I showed you how to navigate around those notes with the baseline by using the the uh, by using um, by using this right here and how to transpose we did that last week with shift and the up and down arrow and then you know we, we went over how to whoops excuse me how to set up a feel to play to right and how I think that's sometimes better sometimes better than a click track a click track is very dry and, and it's really interesting because when I'm writing for film, I'm always writing to a click track, you know, but once I get a couple of instruments up, I sort of turn the click track off and I just sort of playing along with myself and try to get a feel going, which is much uh, different than just listening to a strict metronome. And then, um, yeah, then we worked on drum programming and how to create a bass line f with no playing of bass notes. And also, we worked on how to quantize different parts of the drum kit differently using that technique there. So we went over a lot of stuff today. We're going to go over more stuff next week. And I'm starting to think that this is going to be a four-week project. Um, and then that'll leave us seven, six, six classes to work on audio. So I'm, I'm starting to think that right now. So we'll just uh, uh, wait and see. But try to get the... We're going to go over this again. Uh, more stuff next week. You'll have your first uh, draft due in two weeks, and we'll just see where we are at that point. Any questions on this?
and everybody's up that the uh, I have the dates wrong. It's the 9th of, of March and the 16th of March, which may be the following week. For the fo- We'll just see how it goes in two weeks. But uh, get to work with it. Don't wait until March the 8th to start working on your first draft. I want to see something that looks pretty good at that point, something where I can dig in and get you some feedback. So the piece that you handed in today, I won't get around to giving you feedback on and grades on that until Monday. I'm packing up here. Like I'm going to start packing up as soon as I get off of class here. And uh, we're traveling back to New York on Friday. And, um, it, you know, won't be getting back until Sunday. So I be, won't be set up in the studio again until Monday or two, Monday. So I probably won't be able to look at your projects. Um, if you need a little extra time to finish it, email me. Let me know that you've done that because I may download them and I may actually, you know, and look at them a little bit. But just let me know. All right. So have a great weekend, 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 everybody.